And now, get ready for the top diesel performance podcast in the industry, brought to you by Parley'sDieselPerformance.com, covering what's new in the world of black smoke and burning rubber. If it's diesel performance you're after, you've come to the right place. All right, well, on today's program, we have Graydon Blair of Utah Biodiesel Supply. Graydon, it's great to have you on the program. Thanks for letting me come. Oh, our pleasure, definitely. Uh, first off, go ahead and give, give us a feel, give the, the audience a feel for what Utah Biodiesel Supply does, what you have to offer, etc. You bet. Um, Utah Biodiesel Supply is an online site where people can learn about how to make biodiesel, which is a renewable fuel, uh, and it's an alternative to diesel fuel that you can use in diesel engines on modified uh, that you can make from such things as uh, organic oils, uh, pretty much any kind of oil, lard, fat, tallow, and run it in a diesel engine for a fraction of the price that you pay for diesel fuel right now, especially right now. And so we specialize in offering equipment, parts, information, supplies, consulting to the general public to teach them about this great renewable fuel. Uh, we've been in business since about 2005. Uh, got started, kind of learned about it ourselves and thought it was incredible and, and took off from there. And we've just been growing like crazy since that time. All right, well, excellent. So specializing in biodiesel, one thing you touched on there was sort of a couple of different things, the the vegetable oils that it can be made of as well as uh, what it can be turned into. I think that's one question a lot of people have commonly is, Okay, well, there's there's biodiesel, but is that do I have to have an extra tank? Is that the one where I, I have the tank that I heat and it's just the vegetable oil, or or mm -hmm. what exactly is is that? So if you could you just clarify a little bit on on the difference between yeah. biodiesel and SVO or straight vegetable oil or waste vegetable oil? It has so many different names. You bet, I'd be happy to. Uh, first of all, a little bit of he history about the diesel engine first. Um, when the guy that invented the diesel engine named Rudolf Diesel invented it, his goal was to make an engine that could run on multiple types of fuels. Um, one of the benefits of that is that it actually could run on organic oils, such as peanut oil, canola oil, or, or those types of things. And in fact, there's a story that at the World Exposition Fair in Paris, he actually ran a diesel engine on peanut oil to show that off. Well. In the industry or among the Internet or if you looked out there, you hear about these people that are running their diesel engines on vegetable oil and also on biodiesel. The main difference between vegetable oil and biodiesel is one is where we take the oil and we simply filter it and we modify the fuel system on a diesel engine to allow it to handle this thicker oil that's more viscous because oil in its natural form, particularly organic oils, are thicker in nature than diesel fuel. Biodiesel, on the other hand, is <clears throat> where we wanted to use this organic oil, but we don't want to have to modify our, our, our tank or our fuel system, and so we chemically modify the oil itself to remove the thick part of that fuel out of it, which is called glycerin. Um, so when we run biodiesel, we don't have to do anything to the vehicle to run it. We simply put it in the same tank. We can blend it with diesel fuel in any ratio from 1% from to 99% and, and tool on down the road. The properties are very similar to each other in its burning properties and things like that. They're both really good for the environment. They both do a great job. They both kind of smell like uh, fried chicken coming out the tailpipe <laughs> or french fries. But um, they're very different in the approach. So. A real quick recap on that, SVO, or straight vegetable oil, is where you're running the oil straight in a diesel engine without, doing, without modifying the oil in any way, shape, or form. Biodiesel is modifying the oil so that it can be run in a diesel engine without having to modify the fuel system. Okay, great. I think that clarifies it. That sort of defining line, the, the vegetable oil, that's you're modifying your engine, biodiesel... Mm -hmm. You're, you're modifying the fuel itself, and you're able to run it in anything unmodified. That's correct. That's correct. There's, now, I have to clarify that. Um, there's those out there that will say that, well, my warranty says I can only run B5 or B whatever. Um, technically, that's true, the, but biodiesel can be run in any diesel engine unmodified if the temperature allows that fuel to be in a liquid form. So that's, that's one caveat, if you will. 
Okay, great. And, and a little bit more on that. Uh, temperature is something that a lot of people ask about, are curious about. Well, if it gets too cold outside, what am I, is it going to gel up? I know that's a common problem with SVO. That's why they have that alternate tank. Uh, what are you, you run it yourself and you have uh, a co-op of sorts of other people who run it as well. What have you found as far as temperature wise? What time of year? I mean, here in Utah, we're definitely mm -hmm. a lot colder than some of the other areas in the country, but common. You bet temperature as far as some other parts. Um, t tell us a little bit about when you start blending, what blending is, and, and what you have found to work the best. Sure, you bet. First of all, it's important to know what uh, your biodiesel is made of before you decide how you're going to blend it. Um, to give you an example, uh, canola oil, which is an organic oil, is going to have a very, a, a much lower gel point. And when I say, say gel point, let's clarify that. What I'm talking about is the point on the thermometer from 0 to 100, at, at what temperature that, that fuel begins to turn into a gelatinous substance that, that doesn't move and can plug up your fuel filter and your fuel lines and your tank. Okay? So the higher the gel point, the, as the temperature drops, the sooner that oil or fuel is going to gel up. Diesel fuel doesn't gel till about, well, if it's treated right, down to 40 below. But biodiesel does gel at a higher temperature. In general, what I tell people and what I follow myself is if, if you're making biodiesel out of soybean-based oil, you want to start looking to, je uh, to blend, and when I say blend, blend it with diesel fuel. As we come to about oh, 60 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit, <coughs> you want to start watching it. I take a little jar of biodiesel and out in my shed where I kind of do my magic, I, I put them out there and I watch those and I watch the temperature and so at night when it's real cold I'll come out the next morning and I'll see which ones are gelled. If it's starting to gel overnight I know, oh, I need to start blending. So I usually about October-ish, could be even as early as September-ish, I, I start to blend. Uh, also if you've got a diesel engine with a much higher fuel rail pressure and fancier stuff on it, you're going to want to blend a little bit sooner because what blending does 